one from the ZKS in the one. I'm Zane Scaravalla from ZK Research. And then uh, here at Black Hat 2024 in Las Vegas, up in the Info Block stand. I'm with Craig Sanderson, uh, your VP of Cybersecurity Strategy at Info Blocks. That's sort of a generic title. You actually have a new role, though, right? Yeah, um, part of my new role is really start to focus on a government and government protective DNS. So, what we're seeing is a lot of governments around the world start to use DNS as a security asset. They're using it for national security reasons. They're also doing it to protect civilians as well as critical assets as well. So I'll be focused on that going forward. Yeah, and you, uh, and, and a lot of it is focused on critical infrastructure, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. And so it, it's interesting that you're in this new role now because, you know, between, you know, the, the wire cutting of the Paris Olympics and the crowd strike, the stuff from last month, it seems like there's a renewed focus on cyber resiliency, which it, it's interesting that, I certainly see a lot of it in the show. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure we would have seen that level of it though, and I'm just curious from your conversation with customers, uh, what are they telling you in this area? Are, are we? Are you? Is this anecdotal, or is, is this something you're seeing as well? I think we certainly start to see it. I mean, we're starting to see legislation in the UK. They announced in the recent King's speech there's going to be cyber resiliency legislation. Uh, you also see uh, equivalent bills in Singapore and Japan are talking about having cyber resiliency built into their national security plan. So as part of that capability, uh, DNS is ideally suited to do it, not only because it's highly scalable, but also the fact that a lot of the threats that we're detecting, the, the large scale kind of industrial scams, fundamentally use DNS as part of that, that kind of operation. So using DNS as a mitigation point is a natural thing to do. So we're certainly seeing a lot more interest with government leading the way and the role of government changing in, in national security. Yeah, and I, I think DNS is good for infrastructure. Everybody needs it, everybody has to have it. Well, why isn't it that way right now? I think for a long time, uh, DNS is kind of the victim of its own success, largely because if DNS is working well, if it performs well, that's kind of decided as being the last of successful deployment. What people are not necessarily focused on is DNS as a security enforcement point, but also thinking about DNS as a potential risk. So there's a number of threats that we've identified or issues that we've seen recently where people have started to realize that DNS is really critical to your infrastructure, but doesn't necessarily have the focus, especially from the security operations teams. Yeah, and I, uh, I, I know that there's been some nations looking at changing some regulation around that. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been involved in some of that. Yeah. So can you talk yeah. a little bit about that as well? I mean, you can start here in the United States. So uh, for, for CISA, they have a protected DNS service. This allows them to protect individual government departments. It's an evolution of their existing platform called Einstein. What it allows them to do is to use DNS as an enforcement point to prevent uh, employees within those agencies from going to malicious sites. Um, they sent out some guidance back in April that mandates the use of that protective DNS, but they're taking it even to a further level where they're also uh, mandating use of encrypted DNS to make sure there's some level of privacy. So we're seeing the bar being lifted, uh, driven largely by government mandates. Government's actually taking the lead and driving to a higher baseline when it comes to securing DNS and using DNS as a security enforcement point. Yeah, so DNS is obviously critical infrastructure. Everybody has to have it. Um, but InfoBlox uses it to help you, uh, as you, you alluded to, find if you see things on the internet that can lead to threats or whatever. In fact, and you've had a couple of those recently. One of them, in fact, was uh, the linkage between uh, European football yes. and uh, some Chinese malicious activity. And so yeah. uh, I, I don't think anybody would have expected that. And so talk a little bit about that, what you found about some of the patients. Yeah, one of the things you're seeing is like with criminal scams as they are, a lot of them are using DNS as essentially as their control plane and also building entire malware infrastructures, entire malware supply chains by using DNS. By doing the research on our approach to threat intel, we generate threat intel by looking at DNS traffic. We don't go and chase malware, we look at the infrastructure that's supporting it. Now by doing that, we were able to identify a uh, threat actor, we call them Vigorish Viper. Um, essentially what they do is they do use uh, Premiership and other football teams essentially as advertising to get past advertising bans targeting Chinese users. So the illegal Chinese gambling market is about $1.7 trillion. That's a big illegal market. That is a big illegal market. So they're certainly incentivized to do it. And the way they actually organize this is through DNS. So through our activities, but through our research, we were able to identify the fact they were using, essentially creating on demand fake brands that would then essentially be advertised on these premiership football shirts, including my team, Crystal Palace. That's, uh, that's fascinating. And then there was another one recently called Sitting Duck. Yes. Yeah. And can you go into some details on that? 
Yeah, sitting ducks is a, this is a threat that we've known about conceptually since 2016. Part of the challenge is, is again, DNS, if it's working, people don't necessarily always understand the impact in terms of not properly securing the DNS. In this case, what can happen is you can register a domain that you own, craig.com in my case, and then I may delegate the actual name server for that to be in a different hosting provider. If I don't renew the lease or the registration for that, a threat actor can literally just go in there and just claim it and just say, right, I'm now responsible for Craig.com. So your online brand, which starts with your DNS name, can be hijacked without any special work or requirements from the threat actor. It's been going on for some time, and based on our research, we're finding hundreds of thousands of domains that are vulnerable to that. And of course, if you're a threat actor, you can leverage the, the positive reputation that domain has built up over a long time to then essentially use it in targeted attacks or broad-based scams using that reputation. It's a good example of where just by implementing good security controls and applying DNS security as part of your security regime would allow you to mitigate that risk. But unfortunately, a lot of organizations are just not doing that. Yeah, and that could be a very, a very simple example. It could be you might have a bank that runs a credit card for those who in the airline and they create a URL called, you know, whatever airline, yeah. you know, bank.com or something, right? And, and then with Ocean's over and it's a natural thing to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. But in fact, it's a bad thing to let. It is, because yeah. essentially you build out a reputation. If you think about it, if I want to target that bank, then wouldn't it be a great idea to use a domain that's not a fake domain, not even a lookalike domain, an actual real domain that you just lapsed? and then use that as a spear phishing campaign to target the bank's employees. So it's a good example of where people forget about the value of the domains that they own and the credibility that those domains particularly have and the, how it can be used against you if you're not properly securing yes, them. It's a good lesson that there are no short-term relations with the domain needs. Exactly. You're in, you're in for long -term. You absolutely are. Now, I know uh, Infoblox has always been, has also been more ecosystem focused. Yes. And you've had some recent ecosystem news. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that? And yeah. So, uh, back in, you're working with that? yeah, so back in February, we actually started to improve what we could do in terms of being able to share the critical information we have in DNS and DHCP platforms, as well as those security events. So those unique insights that we have through our DNS uh, threat analytics. However, we don't want to make the security operation burden worse for the downstream security operations teams. They're already massively oversubscribed. They're already struggling with the amount of security events. So we started off by using SOC Insights as a way to aggregate data, package it, and translate large amounts of events into a manageable set of incidents. But as part of that is also to build out the ecosystem. So because DNS is the first service in the service chain, it's quite often it's canary in the coal mine. It'll see threats before downstream security platforms do. So it really is, uh, really obliges us to build out the platform and the ecosystem so we can proactively warn downstream security devices, firewalls, vuln scanners, NAC systems, that a particular device is exhibiting an indication of compromise and allowing them to trigger downstream actions to start to build a more automated, more efficient system rather than the traditional model of just sending a load of data to a SIM and expecting a user to figure out what to do with it. Yeah, and I've noticed uh, there's been a lot of ecosystem activity out of Infoblox recently. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's a renewed focus or a new, but why is there been the uh, increased? Uh, I, th I think it's when we talk, we talk to a lot of security operations teams, the data that's sitting in the DNS platform is really critical. DNS queries will give you a full audit trail of a device and its activity, the services it's accessed. The DHCP information will tell you every IP address that device has had. That context is critical for security operations, but it's historically been locked away in those DNS platforms, operated typically by the networking team, not the security team. So by building out and exposing that and automating the sharing of that information to downstream security tools, it really allows us to be able to grease the wheels of security operations for SIM platforms, SOAR tools, all these orchestration tools, all these security operations platforms who benefit hugely. And some customers I've talked to, one in particular said, I spent 80% of my time gathering data to then understand an event or an incident. Well, a lot of that data is data that is locked away in that DDI platform. So what we're doing with this ecosystem is making sure we can automate the sharing of that data into those tools and do it through certified integration. So pretty much it's out of the box support. So you can immediately plug in and integrate your DNS and DHCP and uh, your DNS security environment into the rest of your security operations architecture. Yeah, and it's interesting that so much of security, if you walk around the show floor here, uh, is AI based now, mm -hmm. and that's all driven off data. Yes. And one of the cautionary points I've had with people with AI initiatives is 
obviously good data needs to get insights. Yes. But silos of data needs to fragment the insights. And I think the security industry has historically been built on silos of data. 100%, yeah. So you could have your SIM platform telling you one thing, but you could have your firewall data telling you another thing, and maybe your DNS data telling you another thing. Yeah. But if you connect all those dots together, then that's going to actually provide you the uh, most accurate set of insights. Set of oh, I think absolutely. And it also gives you the opportunity to start to pick out trends and insights that would not necessarily be obvious. The traditional approach has been, you have to know what to look for and you write rules in your sim to figure out what you think is there. Well, by using AI, and it was, again, if you've got high quality data which is properly synthesized, will allow you to start to identify insights that you wouldn't necessarily always necessarily see. One of the things that we've tried to do within uh, our ecosystem with SOC Insights is allow us to provide insights that you can only get based on the data we have. So for example, identifying there's users in your environment who are going to very rare domains that we don't see across any of our other customers. Those kind of insights really help organizations prioritize what they focus on because right now, the vast majority of customers can't get through the amount of security events they're already looking at. How they prioritize and focus on what really matters, how they drive to that kind of actionable outcome. And the data and the AI is going to be critical to that going forward. Yeah, well, uh, ecosystem has been one of the big changes I've seen in the security industry over the last years. And I'm glad you and other companies are doing that because I've always felt that, uh, I, you know, I, I understand it from a, a little bit from a commercial perspective. You think your data is your competitor advantage, so why do you want to share it with competitors? But the, the reality is, uh, when one of you wins, all of you need to win. Mm -hmm. That's going to help us protect our our critical infrastructure. Yeah, this is where we started. So, yeah. Uh, anything else you want to add? No, I think that's a, a pretty good summary. I think what we try to do is all the insights that we're starting to generate based on our threat intel. That is of huge value. But as you were saying, it's no good just being locked together. Yes, we can do things within DNS. DNS is an essential control point. But it really is about making sure you can share that and drive it across the entire operational architecture. So, as you said. We're starting to see more fruitful discussions in our partnership engagements with other vendors. Hopefully that's just a start and we're going to see more to come. Well, uh, uh, you know, certainly thanks for the work you do. Uh, you know, I know as a former IT pro myself, the, the, you know, the value of DNS and uh, I'm glad to see that uh, it seems the rest of the world starting to wake up on yep. some security science. Fantastic, yes. He's on behalf of Greg Sanders and Zee Scarab Alton, Zee Craig Richardson. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time in the next episode of Zee <laughs>